I think we're going to see some uh, some incidents here today. Uh, lap one is always interesting at Long Beach, so uh, I'm sure the stewards up in the race control booth will have their hands full for the first quarter to half of the race, that's for sure. See some guys there in the uh, coming out of turn 11 there, the last turn, uh, trying to line themselves up for a nice exit to get that speed down the straight into T1. And uh, I, just a few of them there not really giving themselves enough of a gap in my eyes in the racing time, but uh, we'll see how that pans out by the time they get to the end of the lap. Just a slight mistake here against the wall um, wipes uh, not only your quality time out, but it wipes out the uh, guys behind you as well. So. Uh, need to be careful out there for the first few minutes on those cold times. had a little bit of a clip in the exit of uh, turn 11 there which uh, brought a couple of cars out um, as he spun round but uh, yeah it's um, it, it is gap is everything at this track and, and I am a little bit surprised in seeing some of those cars bunched up but uh, some nice times coming in there uh, I think Casper's one of the new drivers joining us for this race so um, he's putting a nice fast uh, first lap there so uh, I'm sure it's all to, be, all to be beaten for in the pro class up there Yeah, we're not seeing too many purple sectors out there at the moment. Um, Alan Jarvis just set a, uh, and the Casper's coming in with a purple, funny enough, in uh, in sector one there. Adam had it uh, right up until that. I, I started to give the commentators curse to him, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, the times are leveling out a little bit now out there. Um, you can still see some yellows. There's someone just uh, gone a little bit short there, just before fountain, just clipping the wall. Um, there's another one just pulled over on the straight. So yeah, it's. Um, it's going to be interesting. Once we get the multi-classes running side by side, I'm sure the fountain is going to have some uh, spilt milk around that uh, around that section.
Yeah, I think it's, it's all about pushing, isn't it? This, the, you know, tyre usage is one thing. In the race, I think it's going to become a little bit more predominant. Um, if tyre saving can can be good, but you, you just need grip at this track. It's it's all about pointing the car into the corner and um, just trying not to scrub those front tyres to get a straight line out. And um, yeah, going back to that first lap, I, I think it, it, you're bang on. Fountain is going to be critical. Um, but having raced here a number of times myself in the touring class, uh, touring car class, sorry, it's turn 11. It's turn 11 on lap one when you've got everybody wanting to push for that straight line speed to get a gap. Um, oh, it's horrible. It, it's, I've been in so many messy situations. So uh, good luck race control. No, you can't. You, you, you certainly can't. And I think it's the same um, when you come out of turn eight, I think it is. Um, I completely forgot my, my lap numbers there, uh, corner numbers there. But um, when you come out of the section uh, on the straight, on the back on the back run, it's exactly the same. The timing of that exit, because it, 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 you're quite a fast corner, although it's kind of like at a right angle. You've just got to kind of brush the wall, but take a slightly wider entry in to drive out of. And if you just flick that in the wrong place, you lose so much time. Those two straight can cost you, you know, they can cost you a, a place or two straight away. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, definitely. I think he, he, Michael had a, a few moments throughout that. Um, he came out of that last corner there, and I think he just he, 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 he slammed the accelerator down, and he lost the back end a little bit. Which, again, we talk about that exit of um, turn 11 and turn I think it's turn 8. Is you know it's, it's all about getting the 
car in the right place and the accelerator down in the right way and and you can gain just so much time so yeah it's to see michael at the bottom there he had a he had a cracking last race and um uh let's see let's, let's see if we can squeeze some more out of that car in the next uh, couple of laps um there was a, an instant there i caught on um one of the race controls of uh, there was a little bit of an argy bargy on the exit of uh, pits with the two of the gt3s so I'm sure um, race control would be uh, looking at that one. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're down a few AM drivers um, for, for Long Beach. It's, it's a very kind of Marmite track, isn't it? It's, it's You either hate it or you love it. Uh, I'm certainly one of the Marmite lovers. Um, this is one of the most fun tracks to drive. I think any... I love street circuits. So uh, I'm bought on Chicago. I'm bought on Long Beach and all of the others. So um, it's great to see, though, like you were saying earlier, it's great to see an AM mixing it up there with the pros. So, um, you know, let's see what Ignis can do today. Keep his head, keep it cool, and um, yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's right in the mix. Please. George, your mic is not on. Can't hear your stream. Can hear, can hear Steve. Cannot hear you. You share your screen as well, George. <laughs> Okay, sorry guys, we're just having a little bit of a technical issue there with one of the mics we've just found out. So, um, I, I, for the most part of, of, uh, of uh, qualifying there, um, George has been doing a wonderful job of giving us a fly round on the lap. Um, and um, unfortunately, I don't think you've heard much of it. So, uh, he is uh, just off sorting that out at the moment and hopefully he'll be back with us uh, very shortly. So, um, in the meantime, uh, we are borderline getting close now down to the end of qualifying for the GT3s with uh casper uh setting an amazing lap time there wow he's just come in with a 118 950. um that's nearly three tenths uh quicker than the rest of the field and we've got some cracking pro drivers out there this season with us so um props there to casper for uh, uh an amazing lap uh purple purple sector two and sector three and four improvement for him as well so awesome and um yeah as we were saying it's uh, cracking to see the the am driver ignis up there um, mixing up with the pros and uh michael balter has also just um, bumped himself up another place above anthony so uh let's um, see how the last week oh, uh, see how the past uh, one minute goes before uh, the checker flag comes out Okay, apologies everybody for the technical issues. I believe you can hear me now. We'll wait till we get confirmation from Andy in the stewarding room. We're just waiting to see if we get a message from him. Apologies for that. We have been going through a little bit. I think you've got most of the information from Steve. We had a lot of back and forth there, so should have been covered really. I believe Steve can now see exactly the same image as me as well. So should be all good going into the final bit of qualifying i think we've probably had checkered flag i didn't see the message come through but we should have had checkered flag for gt3 now yeah i think they should just be finishing off their laps there uh the the instant there i think i alluded to earlier about there was a little bit of argy bargy on the exit of the pit lane it looks unlike unfortunately there um amy has took a uh, a penalty there for impeding the car in front on the exit so uh 
Um, nothing too major, I don't think, but uh, I think it was just a bit of a kind of note there to pay a bit more attention on the exit. So, good to see race controller awake, that's the main thing. And the GTPs are off. There we go. So, uh, yep, apologies there from race control for the uh, delayed uh, checkered flag for the GT3s. But, um, hey, if you've been paying attention to their uh, watches, shouldn't they? Yeah, I think that's probably a little bit of an issue. We've had a few issues with our stewarding software iris control recently, but it looks like they've been fixed with the newest patch. It's a great software, so big shout out to those guys. It looks like Andy maybe just didn't have his sequencer set up in there, which lets him send out automated messages. Got all of almost all of the GTPs out on track, bar a couple of them. In fact, all of them are driving, I can see. So that'll be all out on track. DLR cars all out in a line. That's what we'd expect to see. Give each other a tow. Yeah, they'll be swapping that round on the way around. I'm, I can, uh, can be rest assured once one's got their lap in. They'll uh, be shuffling for position to make sure they uh, they're in the top the top three as much as possible. I've got to say this year as well, it, or this season, it's been very good between the um, multi-class. Sometimes it's a very awkward thing to do, and those that um, participate in in iRacing in general. Uh, in the VRSs and stuff like that, you know, the, the IMSA, sorry, you you know, you'll be used to that kind of situation. But when you're in a league and, you, and it's a little bit more competition involved, there's a lot more respect. But there's this, there can also be some, uh, you know, harsh battle into positions. And uh, sometimes the poor old GT3s take a battering out there. But um, they, they, the guys have been awesome this season so far. And uh, we see some amazing shots there coming through. Coming through the fountain section, you know, the most famous part of Long Beach without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, it's always lovely to see the cars, uh, front ends flicking through there as quickly as possible. Nearly as fun as it is when they're all stacked up on top of each other. <laughs> okay, it's Alvaro. Two purple sectors so far. One of them's just been nicked by Wesley Caspers behind him. He is the first car out on track, so you would expect to see a couple of purple sectors, but let's see what he can do to set the pace. Quickest lap time in the GT3 was 118.950 from Casper Umland. What can the GTPs do? We'd expect a lot quicker with the downforce to get around the twisty sections of a track. 111.9 starting us off straight away. That's <laughs> nearly, in fact, over a minute quicker. That is an incredible lap time to see from the GTPs. Alex Art does a 111.8, sending to the top of the leaderboard. John Paul Seaman goes to P5. That won't be good enough for him. Based on his previous performances, he'll want to improve, but he was the first of the DLR cars, I believe, so he would have been towing his teammates around, although I can't see lap times coming in from his teammates just yet. Looks like Mateus. Still the, it's Wes, where's Wesley? I mean, it'd be interesting to see where Wesley comes in with this because uh, there's some purple sectors in there, and Alex Ott has just gone purple, purple on S, uh, sector one and two. Um, so certainly mixing up at the top of the leaderboard here. Uh, some amazing cockpit shots there with the GTPs. Look at that wall. Oh, that's scary when you're heading towards that thing at uh, at uh, 100 miles an hour. But uh, yeah, cracking cracking cockpit shots there. There we go. Resets to pit lane because it did just scrape that wall as we went on board, it, it looks like. Yeah. I think it was a bit of a commentator curse there on the following. But uh, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, so cool to, to, to be in that car. And those that uh, are, you know are watching this or will watch the uh, recording of this, you know, those that are, if you're involved in iRacing, you'll understand what it means. If you're not, get yourself a subscription and uh, start sending your cars around Long Beach, and uh, you'll you'll get a hell of a buzz from it. Yeah, the thrill of being close to the walls is incredible. I remember before I started proper sim racing, being on the F1 game around Monaco, and it's a very similar feeling. It's the it's the most adrenaline you'll get driving a car around a track because you're just on the limit the entire time and it feels like you're going to hit the wall every time. Mateus goes to P1, although Marcus Ruff does a good job at getting close to him. Good performance from Mateus. He's not had uh, the best of seasons so far. Still a very competitive, very quick driver as always, but season hasn't been up to his standards, I think he'd say, with a couple of incidents and he'll be hoping to bounce back from that this week. 
Yeah, and it's in a, I've got to say, being, um, I, you know, I've been in the steward room for the first four races of this season, and um, there's been, Mateus has just been in some proper unlucky situations um, that have cost him some um, positions up the top of the leaderboard. So good to see him back up there and uh, a cracking lap time there. Only half a second covering um, the top five or six. So, uh, uh, yeah, going to be... Um, it's always it's always a close race, I think, wherever you go with Long Beach and whatever class you're in. Yeah, you're either quick or you're not. And if you're not, you're in, you're in the wall. <laughs> yeah, and as I said, at the start of the race, when I wasn't here live, it's... This is... Obviously, we've lined up the race this weekend with the real-life IMSA race this weekend. Um, it's one of those races in IMSA that drivers just love to win, particularly in IndyCar that will be coming here at some point this season. Um, it's one of those races that people just want to win. It's it's a bit like the Monaco of America in terms of mm -hmm. the, the sort of impressiveness that it is if you win here. So it's one of those ones that the drivers will particularly want to win. Saying that, Robin Duhamel in Am yeah. has just gone to P1 with an absolutely incredible lap. I wonder if he had a bit of a toe there because he's laid down the mark of it. I was about to say this would be my follow on from the previous point was this would be a great race for Mateus or any other driver to throw down a marker and say, I can beat you all here, I can beat you all anywhere. But Robin's an Am and he's just set that incredible lap time. So three tenths, three tenths quicker as well. You know, he must have got some draft and a half down there to. Uh... To, to pull that one together and it's great again we were talking um uh, uh, probably the part where you were missing the first with with you know the ams of ignis mixing it up there in in there amongst the pros in the gt3 and here we go with two ams in the top three in gtp so uh amazing that is absolutely off the scale so um props there to robin for uh, that three tenths i think that would struggle to be beaten if i'm being honest yeah. i can't see that going going I think in the warm-up, we might go back and watch that lap and see how he did it if it stays on pole because that's a big marker to throw down over these guys. See Jean-Paul Seaman with a couple of purple sectors. So maybe he can say something about this Robin lap, but still incredibly impressive from Robin, who's obviously an AM driver, to lay down that kind of lap time. See, yeah, definitely. I think that's... I mean, it's... Jump pause. He just come over. What's he just done? I believe he did a one ten nine, but it was invalidated for contact think he, with the wall yeah, or something. I think, he, I think he hit the exit on um, turn eight by the looks of the control race control software. So um, I'm fortunate there to uh, yeah, he would have what he would have took pole. So <laughs> unlucky, uh, Jean Paul. Yeah, it looks like he was in amongst the packs. So maybe he had also had a bit of a toe. We've just seen the two pink cars. Not sure what team they are, but they've just come down start finish. So maybe some more guys going for the toe strategy. Race control, uh, Balash, car number six was impeded. So we've now got green sectors coming in from so some of the lesser drivers in the pro which will be interesting to see where they put themselves i mean alex Ott was out of the blocks quick there but has, has struggled to to improve but he's just jumped up to fifth i thought that was going to be a slightly quicker lap and um he should jump off the board so they must have x'd as well on the way around i think it was albert there was on for a slightly faster lap um but he didn't come out with it either. I'm just scanning times as we're speaking to see where one of those times disappeared. So it must have happened because they dropped right out of what their actual lap was going to be. So no idea there. But uh, you've seen a lot of people come out of the pits, warm their tyres up and reset, which is whether they're making some tweaks to their quality, I'm not sure on their setup. Yeah, it could be so, a few tweaks, but, you know, it's a bit late to be doing those kinds of changes, isn't it? I wonder if yeah. they're... Definitely. Maybe feeling they've not got the car in the right window and it's better to reset than go again. Maybe they've not carried enough fuel for multiple warm-up laps. It'll be interesting to see. Maybe some of them are trying to work out what Robin's done to do that. Pretty incredible lap time at the moment. No one else seems to be able to get clear. Wesley Caspers has done a yellow but then a purple in a green sector. Quite a good uh, sector too as well. So let's see what it is when it comes across the line. This could be the best challenge for pole that we've seen 
so far. Interesting to note as well that Robin de Hamel is in the uh, Porsche, of course, um, whereas a lot of the DLR guys and Wesley Caspers are all running the Acura. Let's see if we can get that on screen for you quickly. But that may be a sort of thing here. I know that a lot of people have struggled a little bit with the Acura around here. And yeah, we can see there Yao Diaz in the Cadillac and Robin Diamel in the Porsche as maybe they maybe used that car to boost them up a little bit. Yeah, well, we've got three manufacturers for the first time uh, in the top three, which is which is cool because the Acura has been so strong in the GTP class for so long that uh, it's nice to see the uh, the Porsche and the Cadillac mixing it up a little bit with it. So uh, I think it's the uh, most spread out field, I think, from a manufacturer perspective, we've, we've had this season for sure, and certainly next last season as well. Yeah, those of you that... Can't see anymore. Those of you that listened to the races last season were broadcasted by Paolo, and he always used to run a Elo Cabinet against P1, like you just said yeah, there, by one hundredth of a second. So Robin wow. will be seeing if he can fight back. But that's Eloy in the pro class, but then still an am on the front row. That's great to see. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see. It looks like the Porsche is maybe a little bit better here. I know Paolo always used to love running races here in the GCP and often ran the Porsche here because it was able to be a little bit quicker. Oh, little rub against the wall there for Wesley, but it was able to be quicker without losing too much time. So drivers have closed in on Robin's lap a little bit, but Robin just getting past some traffic there. We can see him just ahead. We're going to see if he can improve a saber. Robin's purple in sector one. So there is a chance that this lap could put him back on pole position. Oh, and he hits a wall. No, it's not going to do it. Oh, no, and he, he lost a tenth. He lost a tenth just before that in sector two as well. So it actually leveled itself up, but then he, uh, he just clipped the wall there. So unlucky there, Robin. I think, uh, yeah, time to park the car up and um, Wesley. Quick, uh, toilet break. Wesley we'll stuck behind the Cadillac here. He's not going to be happy with that. I reckon we'll see a message to race control about that. But as we said earlier in the session, there's not really much you can do to get out of the way through there. So it'd be interesting what view race control have on that incident and um, robin de Hamel is back out on track now he's pulling out of the pit lane as we speak so he is going to go for another lap can the am driver get pole position with one last attempt it's going to be interesting to watch yeah there, there's been i don't know what, what happened there but there was an incident there in uh i think it was t1 um turn one there with uh, three or four cars so yeah as you say it just popped up now on uh on uh, the street oh yeah and wow oh someone yeah. oh there we go yeah someone went flying oh. off and then it's just cascaded from there so race control are all over that one that was that was super messy there i think it was all because someone overshot t1 uh, one guy tried to avoid it, clipped another, and then uh, the next guy around the corner. Because you are so unsighted with these things, you, you, especially in the GTPs, you're so low to the ground that those walls feel like a prison wall. So you fly around those corners at you know 100, 100 mph plus, and and there's just a car sat in the middle of the track, and it, you know it's it's so hard to get out of the way of that at that point because you're committed. Yeah, I mean, and, um, yeah, we can see on board how constricted the view is of the driver if we will go back on board with a gt3 during qualifying but you could during the race or, or warm-up but you can also um replay back to a gt3 lap if you want to see this but the, the view from the cockpit of the gt3 is so much better than that of the gtp you got a, a proper windscreen um from a essentially a production car rather than a sort of prototype with a very you're very closed in really it's essentially a single seater so very little visibility especially to the sides with the big pillars in the way so checkered flag can anybody no. improve yellow sectors all around really doesn't look like anybody's yeah. going to find any time robin carrying a lot of speed there trying to gain a bit of time looked like he maybe lost a little bit of time having to scrub it off mid corner let's see if he can do anything in the final few sectors but it's all yellow so far not expecting anyone to improve mateus is yellow sector one but green sector two he might be at the best driver with a shot of improving but he's got to find one and a half temps to get onto pole position if robin can hold on to this front row here it'll be absolutely incredible and he pulls into the pit lane so that's it for robin no improvement yeah. from him
Mateus is the only driver left out there, really, who I can see improving. Coming through the hairpin now, run down to the line. He's going to carry on with the lap. He's going to go for it. I think yellow, yellow, and a green. So, oh, he's gone green last sector as well, but uh, it's not quite good enough there. And uh, in, in the midst of some of that talk there, we missed, we did actually see Mateus improve up to fourth. Um, and also, um, Alvaro jumped, I think, from about P8 to fifth knocking Howard down to sixth. So um, great performance there from the AM team. Look at that. I mean, we've got one, two, three, four, six AMs in the top 10, uh, which only leaves four pros. So uh, come on, pros, where are you? Where's your, where's your speed gone? You get called pro for a reason. We need to see it. I'm sure they'll argue that after the race, but uh, we'll give them the stick anyway. We can see Wesley Casper's there, P3. Uh, wasn't it's his first race with us this season so he's not showing up properly on the leaderboard just trying to get that fixed now hearing from race control the update what he is so he's a pro so got a pro in p3 got pro and pro for the grid in gtp really really interesting to see um right, everyone first of all as a reminder we will be starting in the start zone when your class pulse is a goes in the start zone, you do not start on the green flag. Secondly, we ask the GT3 pulsator to leave a gap between themselves and the hypercar field, something around 5 to 20 seconds. There's a bit of margin in there. Now, finally, as in... <laughs> Okay, sorry for the quick break, just trying to look at a few technical issues, but we think we're all good now to carry on. So, warm-up here doesn't mean much. Let's go through the results from qualifying. Can you give me one second? There we go. Let's do just GTP all together. We'll look at the points after the race. So, Eloy Caminero in pro class is on pole, but Robin Duhamel's story of the qualifying session, the AM driver puts it on the front row of the grid, giving him a nice clear run down into turn one and a lot of buffer to the next nearest uh, AM car. Mateus, P3, not his best performance, but he'll be happy with that. Still a 10th ahead of the two cars behind. It looks like Eloy and Robin really nailed the setup and getting the car in the right window in that session. Alvaro's P4. The third row of the grid is Yao Diaz and Yannick Gerards. Marcel Ruff and Quintin Verdonk follow up in 7th and 8th. Alex Ott and Albert Prem 9th and 10th. Then we've got Belaz Tarowski, P11, alongside Kevin Held in P12. Chris Van Strylen, P13. Carlos Pons, P14. David Van der Vacker, P15. Then P16, Juanto Avale, been with us for a long time. Juanto, great to see him competing this season. Daniel Roneke in P17. Um, Erin Avier, P18. And Jean-Paul Seaman in P19. Steve, I'll let you take us through with gt Freeze. So, in GT3s, uh, we have Casper Umelin there with uh, an amazing time, to be honest, there. Two tenths, two and a half tenths ahead of uh, second place, Matea. Uh, coming in third, we have Steve, uh, Stefan Westra, and then we have Daniel Maggioni, uh, followed by Adam Jarvis, Cohen Ger Geratis, Gerrit, sorry, uh, Lauren Griesland, uh Daniel Morpi, Ignis, Vince uh, Savikis, I think, something like that. I can never get his name right. Uh, followed by Samir Ashad. Same, same there for Samir um, down in 10th. He's, he's had some cracking races over the last season and uh, certainly the first five coming into this. So exciting grid, 6th, 10th split in that group there. 
then we have followed by Paolo, uh, Antonori, Emre, Alvaro, Michael Buta, uh, Anthony Waranta, uh, Amy Grime, and Matteo Lamare finishing the field off there down in 17th place. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tight grid all round, I think, here between the GTPs and the GT3s in each class. It's all going to come down to uh, the respect that they're all going to get shown through the uh, the first lap, I think. And uh, when they get to that lapping period, I estimate probably around about like lap 9 or 10, I think we may be seeing the slower cars starting to get lapped by the GTPs. So, um, yeah, I think it's... Uh, I'm glad I'm not in the, uh, in the uh, stewards' room today. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting race to see from the stewarding room, I think. But we've got a good view up here as well in the commentary booth. It's going to be a lot to watch. It's going to be a really interesting race. I think, like we said, in qualifying, I might be muted on, on the stream at that item. point. We ask the pole sitter to drive slowly out of there. Once you're out of the hairpin, to let the field pack back up again into the double file formation before the start. Okay, that's our race director, Andy, there, just reminding the pole sitters in each class to let the rest of the field uh, bunch back up after the hairpin. We're going to go single file through the hairpin for the race start here today. Uh, I believe we're going to grid on the back straight. Yes, we are. So a short warm-up lap. That's going to be always interesting to see if people's tyres are ready after such a short formation lap but it also means you get to save just a little bit more fuel and we've seen people it doesn't sound like much steve does it but we've seen people run out of fuel on the run to the line at the end of the race on the run to the pit lane so definitely will help with drivers who are trying to make this on just the one stop Yeah, definitely. I think it's one of those ones where, um, you know, it's, especially the fast drivers, the, the guys at the front, you, you've got to play that game. You know, it, you, you're trying to save fuel. It's a difficult track for me to save fuel on this um, in, in any classes I've ever raced because you need to be quick. And if you're not quick, you lose too much time. So making sure that you just get that balance. For me, I think tyre wear is more critical on a, on a street track like this than anything else. So um, it'll be more, you know, be interesting to see how many people get that heat in their tyres for half a lap um, and throwing it into T1. Um, and, and I've got the balls to make it stick. So yeah, let's let's um, we're we're uh, we're wheels rolling now. I think at the front of GTPs. Here they come. So remember, we're going to go single file through the hairpin when we get there. And then we're going to pack back up and the leader will go in the start zone. Start zone is the end of the start zone is the start finish line. The beginning of the start zone is some little Acura advertisement boards that are on the right hand side of a track. But the leader knows where they are and that's all that matters because the leader dictates the leader can go once he's in that zone. It's their responsibility. We can see the pack going single file, although some of them are trying to do double file. So maybe not listening to Andy's instructions there guys further back are taking it single file or taking it very slow giving the guys at the back time to pack up so i think we're in the start zone now the leader can go whenever he wants wait till everyone's packed up and he's gone there and robin gets a good start as well he's gonna probably slot in behind or lose alongside on the run into turn one if he can make it stick, he's going to come into the fountain in a good position, but but precarious. Here they come. Have they made it through? They've all made it through so far. They've been respectful there. Yeah, he's pulled back. A, it's a long race. you got to take your chances, but um, uh, fair play to him there. So pit lane starters are rolling from the GTPs. Uh, GT3s are just coming up to green light. It looks like there was a little um, bit of... Of contact further back, but nothing that's going to affect any blockages on the track. Great start there. See the GT3 is coming at the GTP. Sorry, coming out of the pit lane nicely, just in front of the cars ahead. Just going to say on the start, it was oh, a sensible. There's a bit of contact. Oh, there was a bit of contact there back there in about P5. He's caught it though. That could have been messy, but uh, they got it back. They got it oh, back. Contact into the hairpin. A bit of a blockage there. And just as we were saying, Ignis getting unfortunate with the traffic. It looks like he's had it again, a little bit of contact on the rear end. Not sure how damaged that car is. It looks okay. Damage on the front, though, from being pushed into the car in front. That's really unfortunate. 
time to try and stretch this out to the first pit stop. We can see a lot of cars with bad damage. Incident has already been put under investigation by race control. So GTPs, I, I take it back, I said they've been lapping at about, about lap 10. The way the first lap has gone, we are looking probably at lap 3. By the time we're going to get some overtakes from GTP. So, uh, interesting times. Here we go. So we're coming into T11, turn 11, uh, for the first time at race speed. So, are we going to survive more than we did the, uh, the fountain? So, we're looking good at the moment. Yeah, they've all made it through. We've had no spinners, which is the main thing, so uh, no need for the pace car. They can put their feet back up at the moment and enjoy their coffee. GTP. Oh, we've got a spinner in T1. Yeah. He's in the runoff, but he's going to get back on before the GT3s get there, which is what's most important. He avoided the wall, I think, as well, which was uh, allow him to get back up to speed quite quickly. So uh, all through the fountain, quite good in GT3s there. Uh, got a spinner. I don't know what happened there. I don't know. That was a bit of a uh, in the world experience from uh, I racing there. I seem to have lost a few cars on my screen at once, but uh, uh, back with it. There we go. So it's, it's still bunched up nicely there with the GTPs. Um, GT3s are starting to spread a little bit at the back. Um, certainly the back markers again a bit of distance between incident. them, but uh, we're doing all right. We, we've kept it clean. Incidents are uh, are low. Got uh, a, a replay to look at here. Wesley Caspers is in the pit lane of a meatball because of this incident. Ooh. Oh! It looks he so just... minor, but he's caught the front yeah. suspension at the wrong angle. He's just gone in there too hot, hasn't he? Yeah, it's That's really unfortunate. The yeah, you've, you, you've, it's, this is just not like racing on a normal circuit. You, you, those little marginal errors that you make on somewhere like oh. Silverstone, oh, we got a GT3 there around the long way. You, you get away with them because you, you get your off track or you, you run off. And if you're lucky, you know, you carry on. But uh, in the tracks like this, you know, you've got to be so precise and consistent. And uh, I remember my early days of iRacing here, I dreaded it. And uh, I, I learned to uh, get it right. <laughs> Unfortunately, there we got a 9.6 turn there for uh, getting that car point. <laughs> We're already in the traffic then for the leaders. Robin trying to get past his teammate. Uh, doesn't really impede him too much, but doesn't help him out as much as we'd see some teammates. Is his other teammate going to get out of the way nicely? It looks like he is for the leader, but maybe no. That's really unfortunate timing for Robin. He's going to lose a big chunk of time yeah. to the leader there, but hopefully. For his sake, Eloy's going to get packed up somewhere else. It'd be really interesting to see if we can have an amp driver yes, lead a race. He, he got caught there coming into, uh, oh, sorry, into the exit of uh, turn eight there, and uh, Robin got the time back on him, so uh, on Eloy. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 oh, it's great. When, when you get the overtaking in this, it just, uh, it's just what a track for overtake. It's brilliant. Some, there's some uh, 2v2. Oh, there it is. I thought it was going to happen. It looks like one of his teammates as well in the back in the GT3 has just got spun round. Yeah, uh, see, a big group of 4Xs all came up all at once. Uh, yeah. Maybe been a bit of a stacking up. Not seen the pace car brought out by race control yet, though. Let's go back and take a look at what caused that incident. Like a GT3 no, I think this is an camera. incident a little bit earlier on. Let's have a look what happened here. Oh, spin on his own oh, there. Oh, yeah. He, he, I think he he got out braked a little bit there by the car in front. And, um, yeah, you know what it's like in the GTP. You, you hit your brakes and you clip, and uh, uh, it's like uh, it's like dancing on ice, isn't it? You, okay. Cars, there's no way of catching it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at the incident involving... Uh, Robin's teammate Mateo. So we're going to go a few more corners round, and maybe something's going to happen in the uh, hairpin. It looks like. Because it looked like he got spun. Oh, spin in front for his oh, other it's teammate. Not, it's, it's not. It's his other teammate. Oh, big packing up. Porsche lost its rear wing there. Yeah, there's a rear wing there. Oh, and he's got rear suspension damage that oh, he's grabbing. Yeah. 
think so. He's took a, oh, there's another car turned around in the background. Was it? It might have been um, Matteo's teammate, that one. But that was a mess, that was. Uh, someone's got a big repair bill on there, a GCP for that. I think this may be the original incident with uh, Rob, not Robin, sorry, Robin's other teammate, Anthony Cotara. He's going to get tagged around by the Porsche. He is the Acura, sorry, that was being pushed by the Porsche. Yeah. Really, really unfortunate there. Not much he could have done at all. Oh, there's two GTPs with wing loss there. Oh. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. That I, I you know, I, it's a difficult corner. You've got to be, a, you've just got to have your wits around you more than any other corner. And I think that he's unfortunate there because the GTP was just pushing, it was pushing him a bit too hard. You know, it's a GTP, he's slow anyway. Um, you just got to learn to back off. It's a long race. Um, and I, I, I don't think that that'll be looked upon too good there from, um, from oh racing. no. Oh, incident in turn one for Albert Freeman, another car going straight into the barrier ahead of him. Oh, look at all the cars coming with no wings. <laughs> so we're going to be able to see what happened here on board from Belaz. We'll see the car in front might have already gone off. Oh, he's got damage. Oh, it looks like yeah, he's, he's got damage already well here. Wide. He's going to hit the brakes and it's just not going to slow down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, bump. Oof. Crash as well for Eloy. We knew this would start to happen when all the traffic came about. What's it going to be here for Eloy? Nothing yet. It's going to be traffic in the final corner, surely. Yeah. Oh, and he's forced oh, to go he's... for take a bit of avoiding it, action, it looks like. Yeah. It, it actually looked like he had sent it, but I think he just caught, caught on his brakes. It would have been a bloody good send there as well if he'd have actually made it stick. <laughs> Yeah, there's some uh, X's flying around at the moment out there. This on board with Avale. Oh, Another no. little bit of packing um, up yeah. in the hairpin. We knew it would happen eventually. And it's, it's so costly for the GTPs because the GT3s are a little bit more of a rugged car for those small taps. Um, sometimes the iRacing physics can do things that it shouldn't do um, but you can just rub a little bit with the GT3s but when you start doing those rear taps with the GTPs your front wings drop your rear wing comes off you've got no downforce you struggle to stick those corners you've got no choice but to repair because you lose so much time so you, you just need to play a bit more cautious you really do so I don't know whether that was Alex just picking up a minor bump um, on an X or not there but yeah, uh, I think there's... just having a quick look there's a lot of four X's. There's, there's a lot of X's on the board now in the last uh, three laps. I think something's happened to Chris here. I'm going to take a gamble and say it's on the way into turn one. It's a little bit too quick there for my liking. Yeah, that'll oh, do it. Oh, wowchers. That's a retire, that is. More that incidents LG, that. further down the field. Davey and the Vaca. Is it also going to be an incident in turn one? He's... Currently last of the running hypercars, or last of the main pack of hypercars, is one lap oh, down to the leader zone. missed his brake, yeah. Totally missed his braking point. You could see it straight away from the car. He did the right thing. He just hung, he just hung onto the uh, steering wheel and sent it straight into the runoff. It's really painful. Uh, it was never, yeah. It's really painful as a driver as soon, as soon as that happens. There's not much you can do at all, really. Particularly, and now with the GTPs, you're not able to turn off the traction control. So it makes getting that turn done. That's not going to end well. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Scrapes you know the car. Fair play. Fair play to the red Acura there for seeing that come in and hanging his car out to the left. Or that would have been a, a T-bone stake and a half there to, uh, to swallow. It's like Daniel Reneke there just lost all of that front downforce and being packed up behind the car. Oh, is he going to be on the inside of the... Ah, yeah, he is. That's the incident we just saw on the inside there. It's happened to yeah. M-Ray as well. There's a lot of incidents to look at. Apologies, we're only looking at replays at the moment, but there's a lot to look through. It's important we do. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Is it just oh, it's just a little bit slow, perhaps? Ah, it's going to be contact uh, here with the cars oh, in front. There we go. Yeah. yeah, we've got a guy on the inside wall there. Avoiding action from the incident ahead of them. Yeah. Okay, we're back to live pictures. Yao Diaz chasing down 
Mateus. Mateus in the pro class, of course, but Yao in that Cadillac, the Acura, really not enjoying it here as much. Robin's dropped a little bit further back, but he's Eloy, the only Acura that's really having a good race today, it seems. Yeah, we've got, I mean, it's very closely bunched um, at the beginning, and now you're looking at some of these times now. I mean, it's nice, you know, Yawa there has come up. He's, he took Gutierrez, um, and uh, he's put himself up into fourth. So uh, there's so close, and the traffic is just, it, it, it's its so tactical. But they, you know, you, that's what we were saying, when you watch the other tracks, you can, the GTPs can come up alongside a GTP and they can use a little bit of an off track if they want to take an X and they can get away with sending their car around the outside and just taking a bit with it. With here you can't do that, there is no choice but to, to play the game on this track and if you don't, you, we, we, you know, we've just seen about maybe 40-50 uh, incident points in three laps where you know it's wrecked people's races um, and uh, that's the, coolest thing about street circuits it just makes the race a totally different thing yeah you're really really sort of being controlled by the car ahead of you as long as they know you can't get past they mm. can do whatever they want so maybe Mateus knows that Eloy and Robin are a bit out of reach at the moment in the Yaku but he knows as long as he's quick where he needs to be he can keep Yao behind and do a much shorter stop in the pit lane so that could be an option we've seen Mateus try and do the shorter stops or one less stop in the pit lane before so maybe that's what he's doing maybe that's why he's a little bit slower but it's going to be interesting to see what happens Robin has set a fast purple sector one uh, and then a quicker sector two than Eloy so he's not letting Eloy get away from him too quickly but he's going to struggle to close down that gap now without any more traffic to play in his favour. Yeah, and when we look at that gap, where we, we were just saying, what you were just saying there, George, is that you know, you, 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 you're under a second between third to fourth there, and you are controlled by that car in front. And if this was Silverstone, if this was you know, um, Magnet Core, any of those tracks, the likelihood is this out would have just took Mateus by now. He would have just put it around the inside or outside of him on, on, on one of the corners. And because you can't do that here, what it's enabling there is Mateus to run the race that he wants. So the likelihood is he probably will be running a tiny bit slower. Um, he's going to get that short pit stop. He's going to get that extra run on the fuel. And yeah, it, it, it's, those tactics will show in the last third of the race of, of how they're doing. Um, I think Korea, Chris Stroyland has, uh, has, has got out of his car, I think now. Oh no, he's still sitting in the pits. Um, so unfortunately, I think Chris there must have had a quick repair previous and then sent it into the wall again. So unlucky there for Chris in the uh, GTPM class. Got Davy van der Vacker closing up on the back of these two. He's a lap down to these two cars, but he can use this toe to maybe try and reduce his time in the pit lane so I don't think he'll go for an overtake it seems a little bit silly to get involved with the podium sitters in your class although he's getting right up to the back of Yao who has a little bit of a lock up there and that's going to cost him on the run down into turn one he wasn't going to be able to make an overtake but it's going to perhaps open up the opportunity for Van der Vacker to unlap himself he's also dropped a back a little bit of a car coming out of the pit lane here doesn't want to get involved in it and you do have to take that long route round when you're coming out of the pit lane so not going to get involved here we've got another GT3 in front I believe that that will be Matteo Lemroy who's P2 in his class at the moment got a backwards GT3 in front there GT3. I think that's Michael Ball we've got a broken and that's Eloy. Eloy we've got a broken Eloy Eloy must have just hit Michael Bouter there um, and that car is trashed. Let's have a look what happened there. What he tries to go for then? a move down the inside and... Oh, oh he's not... What, well, he's over... He has, to be honest, he hasn't given the GTP enough space there. Um, or Sorry, he hasn't gone slow enough through the corner, I think. Uh, let's have a look um, off board, but it looks like it's a little bit of an odd date yet. It's not oh. the best move to try, and he's learnt his lesson now. It's going to give Robin, who avoids it, perfectly the lead. He's, Elo's going to try and drag it back to the pit lane, it looks like, but it's not turning at all at high speed. Uh, the front right isn't attached properly, looking from the offboard, so he's going to have to try and drag it back to the pit lane. We can see him tumbling down the order now. Drag it back to the pit lane. He might be able to make it on one stop from here with some extreme fuel saving and the fast repair, but it's going to be really painful. He's going to have to do a significant amount of fuel Ouch. saving to make it to the end, and... He's not even back anywhere yeah. near the pit lane yet. 
Ouch. That's all I can say oh. to that. Oh, oh he's no. He's missed the pit lane. <laughs> he's missed the pit lane entrance. <laughs> oh, dear. I should have laughed, but oh, my God. That day's gone from worse to worse there for Eloy. Oh. That's one of those things, I think, with racing that any other track, that wouldn't have happened. Right? He, they would have tangled a little bit. They might have spun round, but they would have kept their race. They might have gone in the runoff, yeah. but wouldn't have hit a concrete yeah, wall. That, that decision to put your foot down a little bit early and not give that GTP that's alongside you the room has cost him that. Well, it's cost him the race, really, because yeah, he's, he's going to struggle to get back to anything over, for, uh, over the top 10. So currently, leader overall, Robin Duhamel, leader in AM. Saying that, Robin Duhamel shot down to fourth. What's happened there? What's happened there? I was just doing the same thing. He's not pitted, has he? Oh, he's crashed. Nothing Let's have a look up. at a replay. Wow, that didn't come up on race control. What's happened here? Nothing oh, yet. I don't know what happened here. Oh, no. It's a little bit late to be going for the move. He's going to go into the runoff. Oh, oh he's gone right down the runoff as well. He fortunately avoids a wall and managed to get the car turned around quite quickly. He's not lost a huge amount of time. Oh, he's lost enough though, that's unfortunate. Unlucky there for Robin. Puts Mateus into oh. the lead. And I'll tell you what, the leader might be pro, but everyone from second to sixth is amps. So that's cost <laughs> Robin massively. He's not even on the amp podium anymore after leading the race overall. So he's got some time to make up there. Yao is all over the back of Mateus. And this is now for the overall lead, so he's not going to hold back. That's one of those horrible situations, that is. Um, you know, you're unsighted, not unsighted, but you're put off by that entry with the GT3. And I think he was just trying to break late enough to push the GT3 out of that window of the track position. And he just ran out of, ran it, ran out of track and uh, oh, horrible, horrible. Yeah, leading, leading overall for the first time in his ASR career as well. So the adrenaline yeah. may be a little bit high. Yao, is he going to go for the move? He was definitely thinking about it on the way in there. He's got, they've got GT3s in front. Mateus needs to be careful to not make the same mistake. We've just seen Yao and Robin do. It's pretty weird, isn't it? We've had both leaders crash out of the race sort of around a GT3. Lap. Yeah, within a lap of each other. They're diving out of the way. Yeah, they're clinging to their... Oh, oh Robin. That's going to cost him quite a bit of time. He got an, I actually got a better exit, I think, from uh, being held in that way there. Uh, is he going to get in before the corner? This is where uh, Robin lo le left it too late. No, he's got in. He's cleared him well early there. Um, and uh, setting up nicely still. So, so Mateus is still controlling that track position over Yao. And you can see Yao is quicker than Mateus. And he just needs that little opportunity, that little snippet of a gap to put it alongside him on the entry to the inside of a corner. And I'll tell you what, Yao's away. And I, and I think that uh, be That's interesting at that point to see what Mateus has got in terms of pace. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Yao's managed to save much fuel behind him as well and maybe go a lap longer and have that be a bit of a flyer and see if he can try and overcut him in the pit lane because he's really struggling to get by on track. Looks like Mateus has trimmed all of the downforce out of that accurate. Still going to be pretty grippy in the corners and, and pretty sluggish on the straights, but it might be enough to keep Yao behind. He's going to have to get out of his... Oh, no, he's pulled over nicely. I thought um, Mateus there was going to zip off to the right-hand side. Uh, quickly. Closest battle. Tidy through then. Oh, I believe that's Van Back just being put under investigation by race control. If I had to guess, that will be for ignoring blue flags when there's other cars around him. He might have been requested to get out of the way and he hasn't done so. That will be pretty painful if that's what it is. Because look, you can see, I imagine uh, Alvaro feels he's been held up right now. He can see the leaders battling and he thinks, well, my teammate was just leading the race. The setup's clearly just... good enough. Oh, black flag there. Eloy, Eloy has had a... Uh, Eloy's had another crash. So, I'm just seeing the 4Xs pass me on the race control. And it's... Uh, oh, it's not again. Going to be into the same corner. No! Oh, race control will not uh, be happy with that. They'll have... 
probably be thinking he should have learned his lesson. So David van der Vak has just been given a drive through for ignoring blue flags. Uh, that'll get him out of the way of the leaders. He won't be pleased oh, to be given that. Oh, Eli, what are you doing? What are you doing? That was close. Uh, yeah, I think that I'd be interested in that one to see from race control's perspective because I think that the GT3 looked like it closed the door on him into the corner a little bit there. I'm going to sit on the fence a little bit for Eloy on this one. I think the first incident, he was a bit silly. He put his foot down too quickly. I think there, I'm leaning a little bit towards the GT3. He was alongside him and I don't think the GT3 gave him enough room. So, But there was, excuse me, there was another incident straight after that involving... Uh, Chris Van Strydland again, um, which will be his third crash. I don't know whether there was any... He doesn't look like he's been meet with his friend. Um, but um, at the moment, poor old Eloy is sitting on 14X, and he is nearly on a uh, drive-through. So here we, here we see the incident with Chris again. Is it it's an overcook again? Is it in a corner? Yeah. It looks like it. Yeah, it is. Oh, ouch. Yeah, unfortunately there for Chris. Uh, it was a double 4X there, but I don't know what the other one was for, but... Uh, yeah, Chris, I think we'll... Um, oh, won't, won't be taking much away from this race. And uh, getting a few officials and uh, practice yeah, practice a look there. I would be um, a bit sore after that one. Got about a third of the length of the track clear in front of the leaders, so this might be Yao's best chance on either into the braking zone here, but he's a little bit far back, or maybe into the braking zone at turn one. Oh, he's in the wall! Oh, he's in the wall! Mateus is in the wall! He's How lost the win! How is with it? He's in the lead! Oh my god, what is happening with P1 is cursed today. It's a bit like on P1. There was a Monaco Grand Prix, I cannot remember how many oh. years ago, where nobody wanted to lead. It that feels like we've got that again. Unbelievable. So Mateus is dropping down. I think he's, yeah, he's just in the pits. I uh, saw Oh look at that. Ouch, Mateus. Oh I Quickly saw the offboard looking at Yao's car and thought Yao's taking a much tighter line, but no, oh. Mateus was taking a wide wow. line and caught the wall, broke the front suspension. Fortunately for him, he's much closer to the pit lane than Yao was, so he's not going to lose loads of time. He can make it, I would assume, on one stop from here if he can save the fuel like we've seen him do in the past, but it's a massive amount of time loss. Let's see if he even gets it into the pit lane. Just manages to get it turned into the pit lane. He's going to... That was close. Let's see if he gets it stopped in the box effectively. It's one of the most <laughs> difficult things when you've got that broken front suspension to even try and get it parked in the box. Hopefully he's going to take it slow into the box and he'll be out. on. He's back driving in the pit lane now, I can tell you. So back to live images, he is driving again. But we've got Yao now leading by three seconds and Alvaro will be furious at the time he lost stuck behind the blue flagged car because it's given Yao quite a bit of a buffer up front three seconds he's now got he can save a bit more fuel if he needs to to try and do the one stop we'll see normally would have expected people in by now if anyone was doing the two stop so there will definitely be people trying to do the one stop a lot of people trying to do the one stop and stretching it as far as they can seeing where they get to well, what will be interesting now is, you know, because because uh, I was sat so for so long behind Mateus, it looked like he had so much pace. So, what, I mean, I'm looking at the gap there as, as the live gap as we go. I mean, he's pulling out I don't, four or five tenths on this lap to Alvaro. So, Mateus, uh, so Mateus, <laughs> Huawei definitely has some pace there. I mean, yes, he's just, oh, he just got caught by GT3s, unfortunately, but. Um, yeah, I mean, how great is this? We've got an M driver leading a race by three seconds, um, and and drama, drama are plenty. Um, and yeah. We started off at such a slow rate of instance, and we're we are climbing rapidly. 162 instant points now. Um, so it's been busy. Yeah, been fun. We've got awesome. a podium of all M drivers at the moment, but overall, so let's switch back to class set two, which just shows us. GTP and GT3 because I think that's the best way of looking at GT3 and we've been focusing on the GTP battle at the moment there's not that many close fights in GT3 and we've had a lot going on in GTP but GT3 has been fairly close as well they've just had traffic separating them out a little bit but yeah that all am podium has put Robin Duhamel back on the podium 
only seven seconds off of the lead, so it's not over for Robin yet either. He can mount a comeback. We saw how much quicker he was than the other arm drivers in qualifying he just needs to make sure he can replicate that in the race he was half a second quicker than alvaro last lap round and managed to match the leader last time round and he's just gone nine times quicker than the leader in sector two there might be a bit of traffic involved in that but he's showing was, how much yeah. he wants to catch back up to the leaders there, there was there i was watching one of the other cameras there for a few seconds while, while you were giving us the rundown and how got caught in gt3s um so it dropped him he, he lost a good second there um or nine tenths certainly um so we got ignis coming into the pits i think shortly as well um uh, uh, there, he's just coming to pits there sorry yeah and uh, so he's the lead nam driver in gt3 class um what's interesting to see in gt3 class is casper there um took the pole by a, a pretty resounding um gap at the beginning um but uh he hasn't pulled away he's only got a three second lead so that could be a pace controlled lead yeah, we'll see towards the end of the race, but uh, Twitchy there through the corner for oh. Eli. Oh, he's done it again. Yeah, a different corner. I thought he was going to be in the same corner, and oh. that incident is what's given him a drive-through penalty. We saw it pop up at the top in the message from Race Control. That's a drive-through penalty for Eloy Cabanero for too many incident points. The driver that led the race oh. has now got too many incident points. Robin Duhamel in the pit lane for his stop. He's going to try and undercut the car's in front Yao and Alvaro have carried on let's throw the track map up so we can have a look at these cars although there's a lot of cars on there not much to see but this is going to be an interesting gap to watch Robin DML coming out of the pit lane now let's go and see what the other cars are doing they're carrying on are they going to be in this time 28 minutes in it's a little bit short for the one stop can you save a little bit more fuel in the second stint you've got a little bit less to do but it's a lot of fuel to save, and that's at least a lot of fuel. Right, Al, uh, Hal's just come in. Hal's just gone into the pits now. Um, I thought that was, I thought something had happened at first there to him, but uh, you know he dived in the pits as Alvaro exited turn 11 there. So uh, the curse of uh, curse of P1 hadn't happened again, uh, thankfully for the uh, for the for the AM drivers there. So it'd be interesting, yeah, definitely to see how um, whether that gave Robin an edge or not. Um, but I can't see Robin dragging that out now to the end of the race. Um, definitely can't. They're going to strip. I think Yao will they? have a bit of a challenge to drag it to the end as well. So maybe they're both going to try and make it, or maybe it's a bit of a decision. It's decision time, really, for these drivers. Do you sprint flat out to the end, or do you try and drag it out? Because if you've got to drag it out, you've got to commit. And if you've got to sprint, you've got to commit. You don't want to be dangling in the middle and sort of going fairly slow but had to make the stop robin's not pleased see him flashing the lights there caught up behind the gc3 in the pit lane yao is moving so you see robin coming down you see robin coming around the corner shortly i hope oh he's got a, quite a lead there yao from the looks Probably, of it yeah yeah definitely and that's according to the quick timers there that's nearly six seconds gap he's got on pit exit so um yeah i felt Yao there had a long pit stop. I don't know whether it was not a great entry, but he seemed to be in the pits for a lot longer than um, uh, than than, than uh, Robin. But see pit lane. Robin got some hold up. Pit lane time now is one second slower in the pit lane, but Robin's come out only four seconds well, behind not. him actually. So it has gained a little bit, but it just, I think it just looked quite but drastic through turn yeah, one. I guess you've got to take that long route out of the pit lane. Oh. That's a 10 second time penalty for erratic drowning at turn 5 and final warning. So that's probably because race control have seen he's had a, a very similar incident in the same part of the track multiple times. So how the mighty have fallen in this race so far. So Alvaro is still carrying on though. He's made it to halfway. He can make it on one stop. He's got the strategy right. Can he go quick enough in the rest of the race, though, to beat the other two drivers on that? We'd expect to see him in this time round, I think. Let's hope. Well, I hope for his sake he's going to come in, because I don't think he'll make it much further on the fuel. And he is. He's going to come in. Yeah, there he goes. He's dived in. He's dived in. Interesting. See, so we've seen the GT3s all... Well, I say all. A lot of them carry on a little bit longer. The leader, Kasper Umelin, has carried on a little bit longer. But almost all the GT3s have come in for their first pit stop now as well. So Alex has stayed out, so Alex has gone another lap, so that's interesting, so from Alex's pace in qualifying he was quick, um, or at the beginning of qualifying he was quick, and he was kind of middle of the road, so 
he, he, he looks like he's just driving a, a steady race there. If he can get, if he could squeeze another lap, maybe two laps out, um, he's definitely going to be one stopping. Um, and I think that's probably what he's going to be going for. But what what is also interesting is we actually have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six drivers with zero incident points. Now, on a track like this, I think that's worth more cheer than actually the podium position. <laughs> yeah, especially the way this is this has gone. So, Pretty impressive. And, and one of those people is Casper leading the GT3 class by four four seconds ish, four and a half seconds. He has uh, just jumped in the pits, funnily enough, but uh, he is on zero incident points. So, yeah, props to Casper. Yeah, very impressive. Robin Duhamel has just passed Alvaro. Uh, on track, that moves him back up to just behind Yao. Worth noting, Mateus, despite that early pit stop, is now right back on the back of Alvaro. So he is. Yeah. He, he, the race isn't over for him. He's going to have to do a significant amount of fuel saving to try and make it to the end, though. So maybe he's going to go aggressive and go for the two stop. But we saw from the drivers who've already pitted, it's such a long pit lane here, and you're losing a lot of time due to the high speed of that straight. So an interesting trade-off for Mateus to consider here. Does he go excessive on the fuel saving and, or or does he pit it again? But, you know, fuel saving is great if you're out front and no one can overtake you, but he's just going to lose time to the leaders if he does too much of it now. Robin Duhamel, three temps behind Alvaro. Not sure if Alvaro got back past him. He must have done. Let's go and have a look at that battle. Alex yeah, Art, Jean-Paul Alex Seaman in the pit lane. In the pit, so... Uh yeah, will be uh, leading the race as he is at the, uh, this moment. Robin's in the pit lane. Yeah, he must have come in. He must be coming in for his last stop then and just running that to the end of the race. Because he would probably going to have to make another stop anyway. Um, and he must just be playing for track position. Yeah. It's not a bad option to consider here for Robin. It's not something we'd usually see but maybe just getting the splash in now and also considering if we have a pace car before the end of the race that might put him in a better position so smart moves here from robin let's see if it works out for him it's really going to be traffic dependent as we always say in these sorts of races it can it can win you the race and it can lose you the race he's going to come out i think 13th no you'll stay in 12th so he'll come out, he's come back out in 12th there. Um, there's a few cars ahead of him that are going to have to pit stop again that, that pitted way early of the 30-minute mark. Um, I think at best there's only three cars, I think, that really will be able to one-stop this. Um, which, you know, I think Yao is one of those ones that could probably stretch it. He's got his lead back up to five seconds there. So, oh, Daniel's going around like a water there. Did he get spun round or was Daniel that, Morpy? Uh, he was oh. pretty high up in class. Yeah, really yeah, unfortunate. He's on the exit. Yeah. He's just dropped that on the exit there. Got the accelerator down a bit too quick. Unbalanced the car and uh, and uh, flipped it flipped it round and round. So Mateus there. Uh, Seen ahead of Alex Ott in GT Pro lead, we with a five and a half second lead over them. Then we have Huao over Alvaro. That, that gap to Alvaro now is 5.5 seconds. Well, that was just jumped down to five, so he must have just hit traffic. So um, he's uh, he's pulling them around, but Casper's still sitting there in the GT3 Pro class um, at the moment. Ignis is running away, absolutely running away with the uh, GT3 AM win today. Um, touch wood uh, over Mateo's running second guys look at that Mateo Limray is in second place in the GT3 AM class so uh, uh, awesome to see that I know we're low down on the AMs today but uh, it's great to see Mateo, Mateo running up in the, in the podium positions yeah, really nice to see two of them on the podium as well from their team got quite a close battle here with Lawrence Van Stryland and uh, apologies Lawrence Van Stryland and Matteo Ubatali fighting for the podium in GT3 Pro and GT3 overall, which is what we're looking at at the moment. A lot of mix-up between the classes today, so we're spending a bit more time just looking at the overall class results because they don't really seem to be very reflective at the moment looking at the Pro and the Amp. Lawrence is causing a bit of a problem here for a couple of the DLR cars.
yeah, you've just got to go. You've just got to not get frustrated, though, haven't you? And it's the, the more you, the more frustration you get on a track like this, the more it hurts. And I think we've seen that today from Eloy. I think some of those decisions were a pushing one. We've got Mohammed on a on a um, meatball bun. We've got Mohammed on a meatball um, in the on his way in. Where did he lose that? And then did he take a clip? Uh, I think there's been a couple of small incidents that have led to the meatball. So this is the, the first one that we're about to see. I think I imagine he's going to go into the barrier at the end of the straight. Worth noting as well, while we're just watching this clip, Robin Duhamel was the only driver in the 111s last time round and much quicker than... Oh, there we go. Into the oh, wall for Mohammed. Ouch. Yeah, that's the rear left axle gone. You can see it's dropped. Yeah. It's not not good for that. That's an unfortunate one. Um, I don't know where Mohammed. Oh, Mohammed was running, I think, in the bottom anyway. But uh, yeah, unfortunate there for Mohammed. You can see a couple more drivers at the back of GTP coming in for their second stop as well. They were the earlier pitters. But I wonder if they're gonna. They've seen what Robin's doing and seen he's getting the lap time, not worrying about the other cars around him, and maybe considering that. Drive veg asking race control to look at a small incident. Uh, Erin's just took a, bl a meatball as well, I think. Erin Avina. Um, I presume he's uh, either that was to do with that incident or he's just lost that and dropped it into the barrier. Um, we've got two in the pits on meatballs at this moment. Uh, why am I going on as an outlap one? Wow, that's weird. He's certainly leading. And his he's, 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 he's gap is still five seconds there, so... Yeah, since he's swinging five seconds. I think my, my time as a plane... Yeah, nearly five seconds. 4.6 seconds. So, yeah, it's, uh, he's, he's, he's definitely found some pace today. Um, wow, has, isn't he? I, it, it just... It's like... Um, <laughs> Poor old um, uh, Robin. Sorry, completely lost which driver I was talking about. Then uh, it's a bit like Robin. Yeah, you know, Robin had that pace, and he, and he just oh, you know, it would be interesting to see Edney have not dropped that, whether he would have held that on for the rest of the race. So, oh, that's racing for you. That's racing at the best of times. Yeah, this is the closest battle now. Battle for the podium. Yannick in Am all over the back of his teammate who's in the pro class, of course, so is he going to go for a move on his teammate? We've seen the DLR cars cat tangle a couple of times, particularly in the first round at Fuji. You can catch up on all of the previous races on the YouTube page, but let's see if he plays it a little bit more careful than maybe these guys did in round one and think, let's just take home some solid points for the team. We've still got three more rounds to go after this, so there's still a lot to play for in terms of championship positions and, and prize money as well, of course. He certainly, I tell you what, there. I mean, Yannick has got much better braking than Mateus. If you're watching coming into the fast corners, Yannick is is being able to gain a lot of time. Oh, he's just got held up there, unfortunately. But he's managed to gain, managing to gain a lot of time under the braking point. So the, again, it's a little bit like the race earlier on that we saw with Eloy in that. You know, is it is it the case that he's got? more pace and are they, are they pulling team orders here you know it's it would be nice to see Yannick released and see if he's got that pace over over Mateus let's see if we can get on board with Mateus and see if he's maybe lifting into the corners so he's a little bit slow trying to save as much fuel as possible to make it on the one stop but like we said earlier on with his slightly earlier pit stop due to his crash it's going to be really difficult to make it on one stop but of course he will want to get back onto the uh well, he's on the overall podium at the moment. I want to stay there. And he's currently leading pro, don't forget. But he'll want to win overall, I imagine. Uh, it doesn't look like he's lifting much. He doesn't look as confident hitting doesn't, them brakes. doesn't look as confident as we've seen him in the past. Maybe not a uh, top circuit for him, perhaps. Yeah, it's, it's like we were saying, you know, it's a confidence thing, a street circuit, and you've got to have, you've got to have the balls to do it. And you know, it, you, there's a fine line between overdoing it and breaking your, your car. Like, oh, that was close. Yeah, it's a massive understeer there. Um, 
the, or, or having the confidence to just you know make it stick and sometimes I'm going back to my own experiences here you can be so scared of doing it when you're in a good position on the track you know you're in that top five position that you 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 kind of chicken out to a degree of of pushing the car to the limit that you would on any other circuit it's just that street circuit mentality um, you know it's a bit like NASCAR uh, you know, it's a bit like NASCAR, it's like Daytona 500, you know, you just got to have the balls to make it stick and um, and it pays off, but there's a fine line between that. And we've <laughs> unfortunately seen that a little bit today with Eloy, haven't we? So, uh, who is definitely sitting in last place. So, we've got some instant people, got a couple of other people close to drive, coming closer to drive through on instant points now. So, uh, but the top two leading the race uh Huau and alvaro both have zero incident points and are both amateurs so top two top two places and exactly the same situation in the gt3s we've got two pros leading casper and stefan um, who are both sitting on zero incident points so uh awesome guys well done uh we have mohammed in on a oh no we had mohammed in didn't we on a on a oh, meatball yeah. i think Avale's just had a crash potentially. Seen the yellow flags come out. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, we have. Aaron also received a uh, blue blue flag warning as well. Was that just a bump oh. to bump? I think it's going to be worse than that. He's going to lose quite a lot of time, I believe. Oh, he's going to lose the end. Yeah. Oh, really oh, unfortunate. Um, oh, where did the fourth X come? Third, four, third, four X come from? Oh, unlucky. Unlucky there, Juanto. That was a shame. Just a bit quick. Oh, there was a plume of brakes as well. Yeah. I saw that ahead of the... I think that might be Albert Prem, who we're watching now. I think he's going to go lock the rears, perhaps, into the braking zone. Let's see what happens. Oh, and he's going to oh, go into yeah. the back. Ouch. Oh. oh, Albert, what are you doing? Oh, that's going to be a time penalty as well. It's a, a lapse of concentration, it looks like. I think, uh, oh, unlucky Albert there. Uh, yeah, I, there's definitely something. The, the break of concentration there just, again, we've all been there and done it, but. Um, we were about to see yeah, a move. Antonori thinks about it, but backs off. This is the battle for P8 in GT3, P7 in uh GTP Pro, we've got an Am Ignis still slot and ahead. He's going to go for it. He's a bit deep. It's going to be a drag race down to turn one. The Porsche, I think, just got the drive out. Yeah, indeed, it just got the drive out of the corner. Can Antonori go for it? Move in the braking zone. No, he's going to slot back into the toe. He's definitely looking. He's looking. Nothing to go there, though. going to keep pushing him. I, I, you know, he made a mistake there um, going into that. So Alvaro there you know, just, just missed his brake point, I think, and overshot it. But because he straightened the car up quicker, he managed to just get the drive off to hold that position coming into the, uh, the pitch straight. So oh, we've got GTP, GTPs around them. You know, he got the room. Oh, Robin's had an incident. Robin Duhamel, oh no, trying to get past the car to get him back into contention. He was going so much quicker than the leaders the last few laps, and I think he's just going to outbreak he's, himself. He's going to outbreak himself in here, you can see it. Yeah, look, look. Oh, oh, and he's hit it. Oh, Robin, what a shame. Has he lost his front left? I think he has as well. Yeah, look at him pulling on the wheel. So, um,. I think he's got some steer. Yeah, he's got steering damage there. Uh, and meatball. The pit, pit visit. Yeah. Really unfortunate. The strategy looked like it was paying off. The lap times were consistently quicker than the leaders. Yes. He was going to make up that time. Alex Ott looks like he's had an incident as well. We, yeah, Alex has got a 2x come up, but we also Davey got a um, meatball in there somewhere as well at the uh, bottom end of the GTPs. Have a look at the incident for Alex Ott. I think he's going to lose a rear end into turn one. Based off the damage we saw briefly on the car in the pit lane. Let's have a look. Could be a variety of things. Yeah, there we go. Rear end's going to go. Oh, oh and he... Wow, it's a bit more damage than the rear end, that one, isn't it? That one yeah. jumped off right off the kerb as well there, unfortunately. So I think Alex's race is done with there, as is uh, 
Davey seems to be stuck in the pits with Robin, so I think there's uh, another two cars that uh, we'll be seeing out the remainder of the, uh, the last 15 minutes. That must have been a timing error there. I just had a, a barrage of purple sectors hit my screen and uh, then vanished back into yellow. So I think that must have been a race control uh, data flow oh. issue there. Side by side in the GTPs ahead of the GT3s oh, and there's that, contact that. there. That's Jean-Paul Seaman and Quinton Vadonk. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, getting my cars mixed up. No, it is. Sorry. John Paul Seaman and Quinton Vedonk close ahead of the two battling GT3s that we we're just watching as well. I think we're more likely to get an overtake here, so let's see what happens. John Paul Seaman, obviously, race winner this season, or at least podium sitter, I believe, is a race winner. Definitely a pole sitter as well. Well, Vedonk certainly looks like he's got pace on him. I know there's a bit of draft going on there as well, but uh, he's going to have to yield. No, he's going to send it, he's going to send it. And GT3's giving him the distance. Looks can see him and try and go. He's going to try whatever he can to get past the donk, but it's going to be difficult to pull that move off. He's going to get a good run here, but donk has a little bit of a slide in front of him. Can he pull something off into the braking zone? No, it looks like the Porsche is able to pull away a little bit on the straight, showing the the weakness of the Acura around this track. Yeah, you can see it in those tighter corners. Seaman is, is, is pulling that, that gap down. We should have gone for a move. Certainly there. There's but look at the drive that the uh, that uh, Vadonk's got in that because he's because he's got that car straighter. He's managing to put the accelerator down. Uh, whereas Seaman's going to kind of like he's he's got to feather that throttle to get the car straight. So I thought maybe he was overshooting that the last two laps. But I think he's actually playing for that position. But he's proper close to him through the fountain. Look at this. Yeah, the Acura really struggles uh, once it gets in. He's going to go for a move he's though. It, he's sending it. He's sending it. He's sending it. Oh, they're both twitching there. He's got the inside again. But watch, watch, watch uh, Vadonk's uh, traction. Look at that. Vadonk has amazing traction coming out of corners. Seems going to go for it again. again. Oh, and he's lined it up oh, well with the he's traffic. He's positioned him beautiful, hasn't he? Wow, that was beautifully done. Vadonk couldn't go anywhere with that. Oh, Seaman he... tags the wall, though. Oh. I think he caught the tyre wall and the concrete wall there as well on the exit. I think he's got the pace to hold that though. But the Vadon's traction coming out of corners is, is is pretty amazing. Yeah, a couple of uh, oh, he's oh. flying for both of them. Now. He's in the pit lane. Oh, he's in the pits. He's gone in. So on the point of the Acura, I think the Acura, whilst the Porsche obviously is getting the traction down very well, I think the Acura really struggles when it's in the low uh, rev range of the engine. It does not pull away very well at all. It's really the weakness of the Acura. You can see a uh, really interesting test if you're ever in a session with somebody is get the Acura next to any of the other GCPs and just pull away from your pit box without using your clutch like Iris and do auto clutch to pull away and the other car will just fly away from you it's really mm. the main weakness of the Acura I have to say is in those low ranges and it's not something that you tend to see on a normal racetrack when you've got really tight corners like the hairpin here it's really going to show uh, we had Daniel Renecki, I think, take a spin there. Poor old Mohammed's come back out, and um, he's, uh, I think he's just turned his car the opposite direction again. So, um, yeah, really yeah, unfortunate he's... first track for somebody in the championship, I have to say. <laughs> it's not the best yeah. track to learn how the series works. So we've got Anthony Quanta, we've got uh, Mohamed, who's on a meatball anyway. We've got uh, Chris Shryland, we have Albert Priem, and we have Wanto Avale, all in the higher um, incident point range. They're all at risk. Certainly Albert Priem is on an outlap at the moment, coming back out from his um, incident. Uh, he is right on the borderline of a drive-through, so he needs to keep it clean in the last 10 minutes. Um, the other guys are a little bit adrift, but they're still... Up. Uh, 
a nice close battle. We can see after all of that, Mateus is still leading in GTP Pro um, by 17 yeah. seconds. Definitely. Although GTP Pro, Pro is, is, I don't think you're going to see much change in the Pro. I think the gaps, Mattia doesn't seem to be catching or uh, Antonori doesn't seem to be catching those two there that were close a little while ago. Uh, I think it's going to be more down to the wire now of, of uh, GTPs, who needs to pit and who doesn't. Yeah, I think Mateus is really, really at risk of that extra pit stop, much more than the others. I think Yao didn't go long enough. No, Yao did go long enough, I believe, yeah, didn't need to go on one stop. Yeah, I think he's on the border of it. I think if it would be really interesting to see the last John Paul Siemens had an incident. Yeah, he's got a yellow out on him. I don't know what happened. Into turn one, is he going to lose a rear? I believe he's already done this once. He's going to be coming behind the GT3. GT3 no, he's well. going to outbreak himself, surely. Yeah, there's no way he's making the yeah. corner. Kev cleverly doesn't tag the wall too yeah. hard, makes the right choice there to bail out. And Yao is in the pit lane. So Yao Diaz needs more fuel. Interesting to see from him because Alvaro didn't seem to need more fuel, remember, went much, much longer on the if we do pit lap quickly try and get them up before it resets Alvaro pitted on lap 25 whilst Yao pitted on lap 42 so it's reset to this lap unfortunately I believe he pitted much much later I think, it was two laps. I think it was two or three laps before oh there's a dodgy oh he's got he's giving him the track position anyway um now how how he's come out in it looks like he's going to stay fourth if he gets moving. No, he's going to go down to fifth. So looking in the race log, it looks like Yao pitted about two laps before Alvaro. So Alvaro yeah. might be all right to make it to the end if he's done the same saving he did last time in this stint. So what we've got gap have we got at the moment from Alvaro to Mateus? Because I think Mateus is going to need to stop. I can't see Mateus making this to the end. Yeah, I would have expected him in by now, if I'm totally honest. Mm -hmm. 21, so Yannick, I think... See, Yannick, Yannick pitted late as well. So this could be an interesting finish, because I think Yannick is one of the drivers that can get to the end. Um, because I think Yannick pitted on about um, 33, 34 um, time. So if he's taken a few, if he's taken fuel to the end, he, he should be able to go for, with a fuel tank with a full tank of fuel. Um, what's what's going to be interesting is is whether Mateus can hold that, um, and if Mateus can't hold that, that's a, that's a, an, am, an am podium. So yeah, this is going to be an awesome last couple of minutes to see if fuel saving is going to play the game or not. I see Mateus being. Like Mateus is fuel saving. It looks like he's been caught quite drastically by his teammate in the last couple of laps, who he built a little bit of a buffer to. Yeah, I cannot believe that Mateus is not fuel saving. Look at his, he is, you, you don't even need to go in cockpit with him. You can see physically the car lifting before he's coming into corners. It seems sort of, he's coasting it. Oh, there you go, already lifting off, look. Look at that, and that's alongside a GT3, so he is playing for the finish. I think that when you look at timing, I can't see Yao taking 22 seconds out of him, but... Um, it really depends how much we've seen people lose, you know, 20 seconds in the last lap before trying to make it to the line. So it'd be really interesting. We know um, Mateus is pretty good at this, though. So that is definitely what it's going to come down to. Can he avoid losing that much time at the end? Although saying that, Yannick only, well, Yannick's only six turns behind him. So we'd expect to see him probably go past at some point, you would have thought, because he won't want to risk staying behind his teammate and falling into the Yao trap that it seems has been set for him almost. I mean, I'm looking at the splits coming in on uh, iRace Control at the same time, and... They're not massively quicker they're, they're, than you. They're not, no, they're not, and that's that's the, the worrying thing. I mean, you know, he was a tenth quicker in Sector 1, two tenths slower in Sector 2, so that, you know, we, we, it could be traffic, but when you look at Alvaro, Alvaro isn't lifting and coasting at all. Alvaro is flying out front compared to the lap times of everybody else. I think we've got a... Alvaro and, and Yao. I think Yao needs to possibly be on the radio to race control he's got another dlr car in front of him that is not one on his lap so 
maybe that is going to interfere with the results of this race, unless that's... Oh, he clipped the wall. No, he's straight by him there. There we go. He, uh, he clipped the, wall, the rear wire, rear tire on exit there, on the tire wall. So I think had he not done that, that might have been interesting to see if he was going to hold him up. But uh, there's no way he could have done that. Will we believe flags as well? So he would have had to get out of the way eventually. He's already had one penalty. He wouldn't have wanted to get a second in the same race. That definitely would have wouldn't have gone down well with race control. He might have been facing a race ban or a qualifying suspension. Yannick so, is so close every lap to the back of Mateus. He's clearly just staying behind his teammate. It's a bit of a team orders thing here. Four tenths. So it's in, what's interesting is, is Mateus is four tenths slower than if, in, in each sector at the moment than first, third and fourth. So, he's really entered the big save period here now. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Yannick in the wall. Um, oh, no. Let's have a look what happened. He's lost the front left, definitely, because his steering's 90 degrees. Oh, tagged the inside. No. No. Oh, he dropped it here. Too quick in. Yep, yeah, look at the close. Oh, look at the, oh big whack. The back. Well, he, I think he was going into a tie barrier either way, so just slammed the brakes on and shoved the load of lock in and prayed. I think he's trying to, he was trying to get his front end back on himself there by the looks of it. A black flag uh, for a car there. Flags. I believe that's for incident. Points. Oh, it's Yannick, isn't it? He's, he's got. Uh, that'll be for. Oh no, hang on. Who's that black? Uh, it's not on race control. That may be a, a blip with eye race control there. But uh, uh, Yannick got uh, a black flag while entering the pit lane, so speeding in the pit lane. Not what he needed because he could have had a pretty quick wing change and gotten back out and scored some decent points. Yeah, oh, shame there for Yannick. So, so that has played havoc there. So Yao is up onto the podium at the moment with uh, Jean-Paul behind him. Um, what is our time? So Jean-Paul is only a second behind Hao. So, so since, since Yao went into the pits and has come out, he, he, he seems to have dropped his pace or lost his pace to, to a degree. So that's gifted Mateus, really, um, because he... In two laps, Mateus has dropped nearly four seconds behind Alvaro. Um, yeah, just can't seem to put the same lap times together at the moment. He's getting it on certain... Oh, he said just set a, a green sector three, actually, as I speak. Um, it's not consistently quick enough, though, with only a minute no. and a bit left in the race. He's not going to catch him. This is Cohen fighting for P2 with Matea in class. He's got to try and pass the Asalif with an absolute racing car in front of him. It's going to be a difficult challenge, though, both in the Audi. So maybe a big toe down this straight and then the main straight, and he might be able to make a move. He was, he's been there or thereabouts on the pace. He's been quite close for a couple of laps looking at the timings. So can he make... Hey, a David, David, David Walker has just had a, um, a waker, sorry, has just had a uh, drive through for, for instance. I don't know what it was for. It wasn't for instance. Oh, move points, here. So. Cohen down the oh, inside. Oh, he sent it. A little bit of contact both in the alley. Both get decent traction. Run down to turn one is going to be crucial now. Looks like the P2 driver, Matea, is a little bit ahead, but can. Uh, he tries something into turn one. He's got the outside line, so he's going to be able to carry a little bit more speed into turn one. Can he force the driver on the inside to break early? No, he can't. But he's going to try and go. Oh, a switch back, but no. Oh, he's hit him up the arse as well. Oh, dear me. He didn't yeah. turn enough to make the switch back work. It would have been beautiful. But no, that's contact there. Race control will probably look at it, probably rule it a racing incident, I imagine, looking at it. But we'll see what they think when they get to it. So... Mateus lost about a second last damage. time round, but it's not going to be enough to lose yeah. him the place. Saying I don't that, I think he's got any damage from that. that that's one of those eye racing incidents that that can break your um, suspension without kind of like really doing much. But I think they, I think he's got away with it. I think he's just managed to get away with it. But he's certainly crawling back to him. And he's going to have another... He's going to send this again, I think. This would be good to follow. I think he's going to... I was think called. he's going to try and poke this. No action by race control. Alvaro has just taken the chequered flag to win the race. Mateus looks like he's going to come home in 
P1 in pro and P2 overall. So still on the podium despite that incident earlier on. Shows you what you can do with some mega fuel saving that we've seen him do. He is going to come home in P2. Mateo comes home in P2 in GT3 Pro followed by Cohen and the leader is a little bit further ahead of him so he's going to do one more lap than them so that's really interesting looks like cohen's run out of fuel actually it's grinding it does, to yeah. a halt <laughs> i mean it's you know that was that was so much fun out there i mean you know great win there for mateus um and and demonstrate some amazing driving skills there to get that car um on a one stop after what happened so you know it, it's a great win there for mateus Alvaro, again, he's like Mateus, really. What a cracking drive. You know, must have done a great stint in that first sector to get through to 34 minutes, I think, um, into session. Um, Alvaro went through. And um, unlucky there for Yak because he, you know, looked like he was going to get the win. But then so did Robin. And so did all those other people that we thought, wow, you know, this is, this is pretty amazing. Um, and poor old Eloy yeah, there yeah. and Yannick sitting at the, at the bottom of the field. So, oh, yeah, what a race. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, we had a lot of drivers out there that, like we said, had great promise at the start of the race Robin Duhamel on the front row in a, in an AM car but front row overall and it's going to finish down in P14 overall I'm not sure where it is in class but it's not a great result for him so really unfortunate so some a lot of drivers show some serious praise Matteo Lemroy don't know if you mentioned on the podium in GT3 AM so Great drive from him and his teammate on the podium as well. Double podium. Remember last season we saw we were in the stewards room. Mateo's been with us for a long time. We saw him get a podium. We're all pretty pleased for him. And great to see that being replicated again. Uh, I mean, Steve, that was an incredible race, I have to say. Non-stop action the entire time. Uh, didn't felt like we got a break. We had a bit of a slow sort of opening stint, which was the opposite of what we expected. Avoided the pace car, but... It didn't really stop after that. No, it didn't. And, and I think it was, you know, we all had expectations with Long Beach and we all were like, oh, oh. you yeah, know, the first three laps are going to be murder. There'll be six cars left racing and the pace car would have been out five times. And, and it was great to see it wasn't, you know, because we don't want that because it spoils the racing. But it was brilliant. You know, there was that P1 curse in the GTP class. There were some amazing drives from the AMs that really were electrifying. Um, and, it, and you, you didn't know where it was going to end up, you know, even though there was kind of like 10 second gaps there at the end, you didn't know where it was going to be. And, um, you know, certainly some drives of the day out there were, you know, Jean-Paul there, um, Seaman, um, you know, finished a crack in fourth place. Um, you know, Yao was up and down all, all race long. It was brilliant. You know, he was in the lead. He was down a second, down a third, back in the lead. Um, and then you just look at the unlucky parts where... You know, some some um, mistakes, hiding it, heading this, whatever, from Eloy, disappointment, whatever you want to call it. You know, such a shame for Eloy as well, because he was up there at that point. But, um, you know, disappointment of the day probably has to go to Robin there. Really, really unlucky. Um, but what a race. You know, I know we were focused very heavily on the GTPs through there, but, um, you know, Casper, I think, controlled the race in the GT3 class amazingly. Um, I don't think he needed to, to put his foot down too much. Mattia gave a good chase there, um, but some, uh, you know, street racing is just, for me, is probably one of the best street, you know, best forms of road racing. Um, I'd love to see it on the calendar more often. Yeah, I think there's definitely a case to be made after the incredible race that we had there. We've got our overall winner and our GT3 overall winner joining us. We'll go to you first, Alvaro. What an incredible race. Winner overall in an AM car. Obviously, we saw Robin start on the front row in an AM car. And we saw pretty much everybody that led, led the race crash out of the lead. Uh, but you managed to bring it home in the end with some pretty impressive fuel saving in the first stint as well. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, thank you. And... Yeah, incredible race. Uh, fuel saving since the first lap because we knew that uh, the pit uh, the pit lane was so low here, and we expected the race to be 50 laps, not 49. So well, at the end, I even had one lap of margin. And uh, yeah, I feel like I deserve this uh, win after this hard season because I started the two first races with two pole positions and very unfortunate incidents. So we're back. We're back on track. How, how did how was that um, you know watching the lead change so much out there? Alvaro, was you know what did that feel like? Because you know one minute we had 
Eloy up there. One minute we had Robin up there. And all of these P1s, you know, it was like the P1 curse today, where if you were in P1, you weren't going to finish the race in P1. So, you know, what, what, what was that watching? What was that to watch from the car's perspective of all these people dropping out in front of you? Yeah, at the beginning, I, I we started, as I said, I started to save, uh, save fuel and I was a little bit uh, slower than the guys in front. But I just concentrated on myself, not making mistakes because this track is uh, incredible, incredibly complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, at, at the end, I was uh, ex expecting, uh, expecting all these all these crashes, and uh, I just knew that Joao was going to to pit for a second time because he he went in in the lap 23, I mm -hmm. think. So I knew he couldn't make it. So from that point, I was just uh, cruising and going in safe mode. And also because I had a, a comfortable margin behind. Yeah, well, congratulations. Uh, it was a great way. It was a great race to watch from a spectator's perspective and commentary perspective. Uh, I'm sure it was a bit busier for the guys in the uh, in the um, race control, but uh, you know, huge congratulations. It's a well-deserved win after the start of the season. You know, you, you have had some unfortunate instance, and um, it's great to see you at the top of the podium. So, uh, congratulations, and uh, you know, see you in the next race, and hopefully, you can defend that crown of P1. Thank you, thank you. I will try. Okay, Casper, winner in GT3 Pro and of course GT3 overall as well. It looks like you won by a lap according to the standings. Not sure if that's quite correct. I think it was a little bit less than that, but still absolutely uh, incredible race from you. Showed you were on pole, I believe, as well and just led the whole race. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's true that I won by a lap, but it's a bit skewed because I was pushing for the extra lap with the three laps ago or something. Uh, I decided to just uh, f uh, fill the tank completely up to the max, uh, so just to be safe. And then I realized, you know, if last few laps I could push some, uh, I, I know, just for fun, I decided to go for the extra lap and it, and it worked out. But yeah, really, really good race. Uh, yeah, I, I before the race, I told myself uh, I had, you know, I had really good pace. Uh, if there was one race I wanted to win the season, it was this one. So I'm happy uh, I managed to do it. That's great. You must yeah, have... I mean, it was a great. Go on, oh, sorry, John. I was just saying, you know, it was it was a great race. I mean, you, I, watching it from my perspective, um, you know, I'm a touring car GT3 driver. So what you, you know, you could see you were in control from the start. Um, you were right, you know, and, and I think Alvaro was right as well that this is. A, it's a tricky track and it's always the, the greatest track to win on because it's so marginal for error and we saw that from you know the the the, the view up here you could see all of this going on so you know you did great to steer clear of that you, you did that from the beginning and um yeah i mean it's always i suppose it's always good from your perspective to have that buffer where you can get to the last few laps and you know you, you set the fastest lap in the gt3 on the race spec so you know uh, awesome race from you totally yeah thank you All right. Thanks both of you for joining us. Um, Steve, any closing words from you? I think from my perspective, it was an incredible race and great race to, to watch. Like you say, we sort of had nonstop action the entire time. Yeah, I mean, it's like everything, isn't it? You know, we, we, we all play these, this, this game of racing for, for the same for the same outcome. You know, it's the buzz of the victory, even though we're not in a real car on a real track. Sometimes you, you don't realize that. In, and for those that are thinking about getting into sim racing or any form of racing anyway, whether you be, you know, young um, all the way up from, sort of, you know, five, six years old, all the way through to old men like me, it's just great fun. You know, it's, it's for everybody. There's a place for everybody in here. And when you watch a race like today and you listen to Alvaro and Casper, um, the race winners, and I'm sure if you spoke to the guys that came last, it is, a, you're always disappointed to come last, but it's the enjoyment of it. It's the team factor. And when you get into a league like ASR, um, you learn so much more and it is an amazing community to be with. And we've got some great quality drivers from all ends of the spectrum and experience. So, um, yeah, it's a buzz. It, it is purely, a, it is just purely a buzz. So um, buy yourself a steering wheel, get yourself an iRacing subscription and we'll see you on the track. All right. And with that, we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, we are back next week, I believe. I'm just going to let you know where that is. So, Round five was obviously today. We've got round 
six next week at Imola. We've got three in a row and then Silverstone the week afterwards. So Long Beach tied into the real life IMSA schedule this weekend. And it's obviously uh, Imola this weekend in WEC as well. So we're going to go there the following week to try and sync up our schedules as much as possible. So join us for that. And just a little bit of a spoiler that for Silverstone, we've got some timeline weather set out. So we're going to have a bit of a crazy one there. So definitely tune in for that in two weeks time. Uh, I'll just give a little bit of a shout out to another race that a couple of ASR drivers are taking part in this weekend. It's the race for a cause 24 should be able to find the advert for the uh, discord server in the anti store racing discord server. I know it'd be much appreciated if people could get on that uh, stream during the weekend and donate however much you can It'd be much appreciated. And we hope to see everybody in there. I think a couple of us will be streaming the race as well. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you next time.